Well, y'all, I have finished my 15th, yes, 15th travel nurse contract, and I've got some thoughts I would like to share with all of you. So stay tuned for today's travel nurse talk. Hey everybody, I'm Natasha with Nursing Our Travel Bug. If it's your first time here, welcome. I am a travel nurse and I go all over the country with my family, my husband Bill, our two kids Bella and Will, and our dog Bernie in our fifth wheel RV. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you can be notified anytime we release a new video or we go live. As I said in the beginning, today I want to share my review with you of St. David's South Austin Hospital, my 15th contract location. Before we get into the hospital, let's talk a little bit about the city of Austin. Austin is the capital of Texas, and it is located on I-35 between San Antonio and Dallas, Texas. It is a very fast growing city. I believe there's over a million people. It's a big college town, so it is known for its nightlife and fun, its art scene, and all of the food. Austin has a saying that goes, keep Austin weird, and you will find a little bit of eclectic charm when you venture out through this city. Although Austin is really geared more towards young people and singles, we did find some family-friendly activities to check out. If you wanna hear our review of the city of Austin, be sure to click that link up here. Now, let's get into the hospital review. I worked for St. David's South Austin Hospital. It's located on the south side of Austin, not too far from the airport. It's about a 252 bed hospital, but they are under construction and planning to expand in the future. It is a level four trauma hospital. This hospital did have a couple of COVID units, one of course being in the ICU and the other on the med surge floors and it is under the umbrella of HCA. For those of you out there who aren't familiar with HCA, um, they are a big corporation, a big entity. They own lots of hospitals in the South, especially in Texas and Florida, and they utilize the ever feared Meditech charting. It's pretty antiquated. It's certainly not epic, but it gets the job done. For this job, I was in the med surge float pool. So most units that I floated to, their ratio was between one and five. They could go up to six patients per nurse, but that was typically on the night shift. They do have patient care techs or CNAs. They actually have quite a heavy load. Most techs have between 12 and 15 patients. So it's really hard to get that extra help when you need it. The nurses are typically responsible for the first set of vitals during the day, and then the techs get the vitals later in the day. They do also get blood sugars and of course answer call lights and help with showers, but they are pretty darn busy. Now, part of my role being a med surge float position was not only floating to the various med surge units, but also floating down to do ER holds. And we'll get to that in just a minute. From the med surge float position, I actually really enjoyed working at this hospital. The units were very traveler friendly. I was very welcomed. The charge nurses were readily available to help with any tasks I might have or answer any questions. The really cool part that I love about this hospital is that they have something called a discharge suite. So when you got your discharge orders from your physician, you would just call up a nurse down in the suite. She would send a transporter and they would take care of everything. You don't have to take out your IV. You don't have to take off your telemetry monitoring. You don't review discharge paperwork or education. They handle it all down in the suite. That is pretty fantastic. Now I took this assignment in the winter time when COVID was also ramping up. So although I started doing floating between the different med surge units, there came a time when we were getting a lot of med surge patients holding in the emergency room. So I spent a lot of time doing ER holds. That is a whole new universe. 
when you go down to this ER, it's kind of like the Wild West. The charge nurse says, here's your patients, here's your rooms, and there you go. Uh, you kind of get shown around to at least where the supply room is, but otherwise you're kind of off in your own section of the ER and you're on your own. The med surge hold part of the ER had 12 beds, whereas a typical med surge unit has anywhere between 28 and 32 beds. And they did divide up the unit between two nurses. However, you didn't always have a tech. So you have five patients totally by yourself and that can get pretty overwhelming. You really feel like you are left to your own means when you are doing these ER holds. Of course, the ER is super fast paced and doing ER holds, you are really just hanging on to a patient for just a few hours until they get a room upstairs. So there's high, high turnover. And we weren't really given direction as to what our responsibilities were as the nurse doing these med surge holds. In the beginning, I was doing a full assessment, passing meds, taking care of the patient's needs, and doing an admission all while they're there for that 30 minutes to four or six hours. I remember I had one shift in which I had eight patients total and each patient had an admission to be done. It was insanity. Now I did come across a really negative event that really put me in a tough situation with this contract that I've never been in in my five years of working as a travel nurse. Long story short, I did end up canceling this contract early. Now I will get into more details about how that went down and what kind of repercussions I face with my agency and with the hospital system and I will record that for a future video and come back and link that here. Now let's get down to the nitty-gritty. Would I return to this hospital? Well, if I were returning and doing just a standard med surge float or a standard contract on one of the med surge units, yeah, I would give it another shot. I felt welcomed. They had good teamwork. Uh, the ratios were great and I didn't feel overwhelmed. However, if they were in crisis mode and it needed another ED hold med surge position, no way, no how would I come back and do that because I canceled my contract. I'm not able to come back to this hospital, but if I had the choice, mm -mm, I would not do that again at all. Um, my license is too important um, to put that in jeopardy. Well, what did you think? Would you give St. David South Austin Hospital a shot? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Again, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell. To see some of my other hospital reviews, make sure to click the link right up here. Well, this is Natasha with Nursing Our Travel Bug, encouraging you to nurse what makes you happy. Thanks for watching.